ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday. Battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday. And finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on Chess.com. Hi, I'm International Master Ivan Gahowska, and welcome to my first course for Chasuble, starting out the Karakhan. Light square strategy is what I like to call it. You put your pawns on light squares, you develop your pieces, and then when the time is right, you break out in the center. What I need you to do is get in the focus of quick development. Knight takes g7, check is possible, king moves to f8, attacking the knight. And now after knight to h5, what we want to be doing is first asking that question to the knight because white can immediately go wrong with knight to e2 we simply go knight to b4 and this bishop and the knight have orchestrated a sneak attack against c2 and now black is totally winning there are lifelines to help you remember the piece configurations there are guidelines there are cautionary tales and of course there are my trademark phrases all to help you get a good karakhan Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday. Battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday and finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on Chess.com. Hello, I'm Vanka Hauska, and you're here joining me for the early opening roulette, of course, in the Karakhan. There aren't there with the Karakhan, so I thought I had to get it. I can't wait for this, actually, because it's my favorite opening. And today, well, my chessable course on the Karakhan was released. Now, it started off as a course, but it became so much more than that. It became like this passion that I would spend every evening, every afternoon, every dream that I had was about the Karakhan. And it was pretty intense, 
but I really enjoyed myself and I also shared every little bit of knowledge that I had uh, <laughs> and even ones that I picked up along the way and it's quite funny because so many times I you know I was trying to explain a position because what I was trying to do with the car uh, with this chessable course was to try to explain the basics and in order to do that I had to play lots of games and that and so I would often get my phone I would make my phone play the Karakan and then we would just like you know just have this kind of jolly against each other where we would fight it out and the computer would always kill me and and I would always try to understand like why was it beating me what mistakes I was making with the white pieces and then there would be like these aha moments and I was like ah. Oh. Oh, so that's what it's all about. And then I shared that information with absolutely everyone. So I didn't keep anything to myself. And I'm going to be following the chat. Thank you. <laughs> you just made appearance on the stream. But uh, yeah, I will be I will be uh, playing this uh, this opening roulette march in the Karakan. And I will be answering your questions here on chat. And well, I will be looking at all the games where possible. I will be also following the chat and I will be playing some Karakan myself. And a big hello to the Warrior 72, Los Cooper. Yes, you better behave, Los. He's, <laughs> he's my 4NCL captain and also one of my best friends. So yeah, he can say what he likes. To Mac G and everyone else who's watching. So I'm just waiting for the games to begin. That's going to happen in three minutes. And hopefully I will be able to follow the chat. And I could just see that I needed to refresh my <laughs> Twitch stream because I could see people chatting, but I couldn't see what was happening. And here I am. Yeah. Now I can see you all. And thank you, Max Malai. Max Malai, Nick. Very good. Yes, uh, I actually had that. I am homeless. I was uh, in Oslo. I was about to do the Champions Chess Tour and I was just catching some sun. And this guy comes up to me and says, hey, <laughs> Coca-Cola. And I was like, not quite. And then he looked and he goes, hmm, is that something else? I'm like, no, no, it's not that. And then it's like Karakar, my favorite opening. But, you know, one of the funny things that I discovered about the Karakan a long, long time ago was that it was all Horatio Caro's work. <laughs> Mr. Khan just played one game and that was it. But it was quite a nice game and we cover it in the course, actually. So I'm just holding on to my water and I'm getting ready for the games to begin. So I am, it's still time to enter the early opening roulette. And today is all going to be about the Caro. So I just, I, there's one downside to this. They're going to make me play on the white side. And I've been playing a lot of E4 on my chess.com account. But I've got a dreadful score against the Caro. It's one of those cases of knowing too much. Yes, and there you can see. <laughs> be like Mr. Khan. Yeah, you should be like Mr. Khan. Play one game, win in it. But win in such fantastic style that an opening is named after you. That's the way it goes. Okay. And uh, I'm ready to play online. Hopefully you can see my games. Oh, thank you very much. But don't you like my Karakan jumper even better? I don't know whether they still sell them anymore. It would be a shame if they stop selling them, especially now that we have so many Karakan aficionados. Neither. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm waiting for the games to begin. Do I have to refresh? Have the games all kicked off? Ah, oh, okay, okay. I'm being told 19 seconds. Uh, 19 seconds. Oh, yes, yes. It's 3.59. I was there eager to start. Khan was Austrian. Yeah, that's right. Marcus Khan was Austrian. And we are going to begin, it's 3.59, not 4. And a big hi to Ash Kapoor and also Accidental Novelty. And yeah, and here we go, E4, C6, and I'm black. I love to play with the black pieces. And now, okay, so this is the two knights. So this is what I'm going to play in my course. I go knight to D7, getting ready to go knight GF6. I'm not going to double my pawns, even though that's quite viable. I play it myself. Now, there's some issues here. 
that I have to be extra vigilant. Vigilant. If the white queen had come to E2, I have this rule in my in my chessable course that once the queen steps in, you gotta have your radars just warning like crazy. But it's fine with this bishop on C4. Because if the queen comes to e2, then you've got to be careful about knight to d6. But for the time being, everything is fine. So you just go knight g f6. There's no attacks on f7. And the main thing is, and this is something that I really kind of like drum in, these guys are going to be attacking you on the light squares. So you, what you got to do is block the bishop c, knight to d6. Now, I actually saw that in the wild. It was played at the Politican Cup. And I can't remember who was playing with the white pieces, but it was Richard Report. No, Richard Rapport was with the white pieces and I can't remember who was playing with the black pieces. And yeah, it was just really sad. Knight to d6 was played and it was going to be checkmate. And yes. Okay, so now what we do is we take that one off. Exchanges are always going to help us here. And now what I discovered in this course was that you've got to make this bishop on c1 bad. So after d4, you can even make moves like h6. And then we're going to get on with castling and we're going to just develop this bishop b6, bishop, whoops, what's wrong with my arrows today? Bishop to b7, I think I'm just excited. <laughs> I, I, you know, I put so much work and so much effort and so much love on my chessable course that I'm a little bit nervous about how it's going to be received. You know, did I go too deep? Did I, yeah. Are good people gonna like it? And what are how are people gonna be feeling about this? So here this knight comes to e5. So one of the things that you've got to note is that always you've got to be worried about your light squares. Just in the opening, once you've navigated that, what you can do against this knight on e5 is that you're gonna fight it. You're gonna fight it by undermining with c5 at the right time. So castles. And one of the things about having a bishop on c4 is that you can put your knight onto d5 without any problems. Okay, so now it's very tempting for me to go c5, and I'm not a patient person, so let's do it. Let's go, or do I go queen c7? Okay, I think, am I going to get into trouble? Let's, let's, let's build, let's build, let's not rush it. Let's try to get c5 in the perfect way possible. So maybe I'm going to take my time and go b6, bishop b7. And there's a nice pin against this knight on e5. And I've just got to be a little bit careful that my king is safe. Okay, so there's nothing happening this direction. So let's go b6. And then I can always block things. Oops, I don't know what's happening with my arrows. Today is not a coordinated day for me. So... Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have gone b5. It is what it is. Come see, come sa. Just look after your king, Yovi, and you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, Pawn March Destroyer. Hello. Yes, I am back. I am streaming. I'm here to celebrate the launch of my chessable course starting out the Karakhan. And because I'm very excited today, you know, it's not often that I release a chessable course i'm a little bit like oh jittery and so my arrows are all over the place and i and i mean that in every single way <laughs> i keep making mistakes there so here the time control is 10 minutes um and if you yeah the time control is 10 minutes for all the moves and so it's a nice leisurely pet place pace pace I must remember that because I often play just three minutes and one minute. I, I do sit in there and play one minute of chess. So now, okay, so what's he doing? Always think about what your opponent wants to do. And sometimes it's a bad idea. Just let it happen. I, and sometimes when it's a good idea, ah, he wants the pin. Ah, but am I afraid of that? No, 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 no. Let's challenge for the open D line when it arrives. So I just got to make sure... Oh, maybe he wanted to go knight. Oops, whoops. My arrows are really off center. Knight takes f7, but then I can go rook takes f7. No, h3. Well, that's a very sophisticated move. Okay, so now is the time. I've waited all my life to do this. And now I'm going to come in with my queen here. 
And now I have pressure against e5. <laughs> I don't need arrows. Really? Oh man, I've got to stream more often. I thought like arrows were a must. You see the Hikaru doing them all the time. All the grandmasters are going da -da 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 and my arrows are just not very, very good. And they can even do them in different colors. I, uh, I'm not that good. I'm not so good. Okay, so now I'm contesting the D line. I have pressure against this knight on E5. My bishop on D6 is okay, is great. My bishop on B7 is great. Oh, so that was the plan. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Is that is that something that I should be scared of? So I can go root to king takes, but I'm not in. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not that kind of person who's going to go in for that. So what I'll do is I'll go like this. And then I'm going to curl up. Oh, I've got to stop this queen takes. Why did I not pay attention to this before? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, you've anchor. Well, well, well. Let's take this because I'm threatening queen takes pawn. And then I have this beautiful bishop to thank for things. Oh, I was too busy talking. You know, that's one of the things about streaming is that you often have to talk. You have to play chess. And yeah, that's not sometimes that easy. <laughs> Even though when it comes to commentary, I find it quite easy to talk chess. Is it rated? I don't think it is rated. No, it is rated. Okay, so there, there, there's your answer. And oh, I think I might have already blundered like a fool. Okay. Yeah, this is not good. This is not gone well for me. Well, maybe, maybe I can still survive. There's still this. I still have my... Oh, wait, are you streaming from home? I'm streaming from home. I'm streaming from uh, Bergen in Bergen in uh, Norway. But I'm actually going to chess again. So I'm going to play in uh, South End, South End on Sea. So I'm looking forward to that. It's a rapid play. And yeah. So, and then I'm also going to be doing commentary in the candidates for the women's candidates i'm really looking forward to that i can't wait to see who's going to be challenging ju wenjin is he going to be lating jay is it going to be oh okay so i can check uh hang on a second i i am just looking at rick takes porn rick takes porn and i'm also going to be playing the european women's championship in april so i think it's going to be so much fun I'm looking forward to coming back to the chessboard. Rook. Let's go here. And I'm getting ready to meet queen to b7 with rook f7 counter check. I, oh, Arsh Kapoor, well done. You won your first game. That's awesome. Now, how to handle this? Queen takes pawn, and my king is in danger. So I have a golden rule in chess. When your king is in danger, you swap with queens, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, da, 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 da. Bishop, bishop takes, I should have gone, okay. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Queen takes pawn, queen takes pawn, rook takes pawn, and there's nothing. Oh, my king is too unsafe. That's a shame. 529. I should have I should have used a little bit more time on my clock. I didn't see knight takes f7. I thought I was good, but I should have been a bit more careful. Um, okay, okay, okay. But there's still some checks, and there's still this check that I need to deal with. Queen to e2. No, rook takes rook, queen check. No, and there's also queen h8 check mate. I also have, hang on a second, hang on a second, rook, no, rook to the queen takes queen. And if I go bishop to h2, hmm, I might have to give this one up. Yes. It's a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Start off with a bang, I say. 
Okay, so I think I'm going to resign this one. I don't see a way out because unfortunately, rook to f7, checkmate. And if I go queen, queen here, king takes rook. Now I start calculating. Okay, but uh, yeah, four minutes and 50, bishop h2, rook takes, queen takes pawn. No, no, no checks, no nothing. Oh, wow. What can I do? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Anyway, yeah, I think anyone can join this arena, but you just got to play the Caracon, whether you like it or not. That's my one rule. And uh, it's a really cool idea because you can practice, you know, you can practice as many openings as possible. So I think there's already been arenas in the Queen's Gambit decline. Okay, I'm just going to resign this one because it's just bad. So let's go on to the next game and uh, let's talk chess. No, no, no. It's not only for special VIPs. I am no special VIP. I'm just, oh, no, I'm on the white side. Oh, chess guide player 21. So 117 is the rating. Oh, it's my move, of course, because they played the... <laughs> they played the caro. Uh, okay. No, it, the caracon is all about light square strategy. So you've got to put your pawns on light squares and then you develop all, all yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I will be mean here. Okay. So yeah, ch chess guy, just remember if you, if you're watching this stream, what you're going to do in the caracon is going to put your pawns on light squares. You've got to develop your light squares, your bit, your pieces onto light squares. So your bishop will come out to f5 if allowed. And once the bishop gets out, you've got to then focus on getting your king to safety. And once you've done that, then it's going to all be all about that pawn break, usually on a light square. Oh, okay. Yeah, pawn takes queen. And yeah, that's... Uh... Oh, okay, stop being... I'm going to take that. Is my course free? No, it's not free. <laughs> I, I I did insist, though, that it's it's be priced at an accessible point. So I didn't really want a very expensive course, even though I did, uh, there's 120 plus lessons in there and there's quite a few hours. I, I did put a lot, a lot of work into it. So it's not free, but it is on sale. And I did insist that it should be accessible to everyone. So <laughs> no, this this is not quite in my chessable course. But uh, just remember, next time, chess guy, it's all about putting your pawns on light squares. And you do that to challenge the center. Then you make room for your pieces to develop and then get your king to safety. And here, well, I'm going to be taking that pawn. And okay, my king is unsafe, but it does have, as long as I'm careful, that should be absolutely fine to deal with. Oh, that's a nice move. But now I'm going to simply throw in a check here. Yeah, then I want that one. Then I got my eyes on this prize. It was a labor of love. It really was. Uh, I I put in a lot of work, a lot of effort. And I hope everyone likes it. I hope people who watch it learn something from it. It's aimed at beginner intermediate. But because I shared absolutely all of my knowledge, I do feel that there's something in there for everyone. So, okay, next game. Uh, oh, hi, Bunny. Hi. Oh, no, I got the white pieces again. <laughs> the, the arena said to me, you, you lost with the Caracan. Okay, so this is how you do it. So now I'm going to go for the advance. This is how I used to play when I, um, when I faced it, when I was an E4 player. I've been thinking about the idea of playing e4, going back to some of my old lines. And actually, I managed to get my rating up to quite high going e4 and just playing like my old close Sicilian and my old French advance. Yes, yes, Christophe Silek is, yeah, I, I know. And uh, also Alex Banzia also recommends... Uh, Karakhan, and it goes also goes hand in hand with the London system. There, it's about putting your pawns on dark squares, but the pawn structure is very similar, so it's the same. So this is how I used to play it when I was a kid. So I used to play for one simple thing when I used to have the advance. So I used to try to win the bishop, 
and then I used to be I was such a brute I would then just born storm the king and I was really happy with the way that I used to have these positions but now I understand that it's not such a good idea to okay so what I'm gonna go like this and then I'm gonna see if I can control the breakthrough okay so let's control so my whole idea with the this particular setup is just to squash black so if I can stop them breaking out completely then I will be doing very very well so I have control of the dark squares I just have to fight that urge to pawn storm there's no need to pawn storm Yovi you don't have to do it every single occasion now I've locked that position down on the queen side so that carries with it some risk because I could make it so blocked that there's no way to break through. But talking about breakthrough, I hold the key to opening up the line, and that is getting in G4. So obviously this has to be done in a very careful way. But I also have control over the F6 square. Can I get a piece there? I am going to take my time. Um, I really want a knight to that square, but I don't see how to get there. Okay, let's 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 uh okay, 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 okay. Black is doing the job for me. Have I heard of the Guggen? Yes, I have heard Chess Chesperad of the Guggen Gnitzer. That's uh when you go e4, c6, d5, and you combine it with g6. And I saw a very interesting article just now um by Matthew Sadler. Now, Matthew has always been an idol of mine. I love the way that he plays chess. And he was saying when he came back to chess, it was one of the first things that he looked at. And I was looking at the pawn structure and I was thinking, actually, it's quite similar to the Karakhan in some respects, especially if I managed to get um, d5 in. Okay, so I'm going to put that one, going to bank that one. The quick bishop is covered on h5. And she only took her <laughs> touch notes. All the, I, I know some issues. I'm very bad with names though and, uh, and one of the things that I was really adamant about was I wanted to be a, a simple course because I don't know about you but is anyone else struggling with a bad memory am I the only person in the room because I feel like there's so much data these days that I just don't have a control over Oh, oh! But if I take, takes, takes, yeah. But I have complete control in this position. No, let's introduce the piece that's not working. Raise his hand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the only one out there. Oh, I, I was, I was thinking that I'm the only person. Maybe even the only title player. Okay, hang on. There's, there's this queen takes queen who um, just can't remember a thing. And I'm like, what, what is that? What is that all about? And I, I just, I'm just convinced it's because of all this data that we have available to us. You know, there's so much information overload. We have the internet giving us news all the time. We have... What else do we have? We have so let me take that declare. I think I could have won that night a while ago. I just didn't see. And yeah. Can't <laughs> very good. Very good. Bad memory? Can't recall. Yes. Okay, so I won that one. So let's go to the next arena game. And oh, Queen Sandra. Oh. Oh, Sandra. Queen Sandra. Okay, so Karakhan. I've already pre-moved d5 and here we go okay so this is what i recommend in my course bishop f5 and the most popular move according to the stats at least in the database of uh, players lower rated than uh, 1600 is that everyone is going bishop to d3 so knight to e2 not to worry about if they combine it with knight to g3 trying to hunt down my bishop with h4 all i need to do is go h5 and then what you do is you just sacrifice that pawn on h5 you don't care about it ah so bishop to d3 exchanges are good 
And uh, then you just work on the center because whites use so much time in making moves such as h4, h5 on the king side that you can just focus on the queen side. And that, this point, d4, is the vulnerability. You usually play c5. I, I flirt between the two. I Oh, well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Are you saying you usually play the Sicilian? <laughs> you usually play bishop f5. So, okay, let's take that one. I might have uh, walked into that one. I just made this assumption that everybody's playing the Karakhan. Uh, that's not the case. So let me take that pawn. And now I'm I'm really taking liberties with my development in the search for winning material. So here you've got to be careful. So now I'm going to be looking at consolidating my position. Yeah, c5 is a funny sideline. I don't know why people play that. It's like they overshot the c with the c pawn. So queen to d7, top of queens. Yes, 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 yes. Now I'm going to take the knight. And now I've got my wall of pawns. My king is safe. So now I go here. And I'm a pawn up. I want to control this knight on g3. So I'm thinking about making moves like g6 to stop this knight coming to f5. So my opening is almost almost always knight to c6. Ah, knight to c6 is the Nimzovich Larsen. And I, I think that's a decent opening. One of the great things about these type of, oh, like the Karos, your Nimzovich, is, is that people don't know. Oh, oh, hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on a second. I wasn't paying attention and I almost blundered. I was thinking about controlling this knight square to b5. Don't want that. Instead, I am going to go for well, that pawn structure. Going to go bishop to b4. Try to win some more material. It's the accelerated Karakhan. Yes, it is the accelerated Karakhan. I don't. Why did I go? Yeah, that's a that's a throwback actually from my days as a junior. I was always capturing towards the center. But one of the things that I I, I did is um because my open and, and we have an M, I have an end game chapter in my Karakhan course where I look at one of Keith's games and sorry Keith Arkell's games and Keith Arkell is one of the biggest experts on the Karakhan especially the knight d7 lines and also c5 e4 c6 d4 d5 c5 lines and what was really nice about Keith's games is that he uses a very unique way of thinking. He he has this um, theory of pawns where he says the most important pawns are the center pawns. So the H pawn, the, sorry, the A, the B pawn is more valuable than the A pawn. The C pawn is more valuable than the B pawn. And so this continues up to the F pawn. But the F pawn is dependent on king safety. And this is such an instructive way of thinking because what he of, often wants to do is he okay so i want to make that trade and then i'm going to take that knight and it's a really nice way of thinking especially in the Karakhan, because what he's doing is he's often doing a queen side sorry a minority attack on the queen side with just two pawns versus three which one do i recommend for club players to be honest they're all good but it depends on what you want from the opening. Sorry, I'm going back to Max Malone. And it depends on what you want. So the reason I didn't go for Bishop to F5, which is my book recommendation, is because you need to know at least 17 moves of theory. And if you are if you already know those 17 moves, then Bishop to F5 is very nice because you can control a lot the pace of the game. And also one of the things I love about Bishop to F5 is you can use your familiarity with the piece configuration and your pawn structures in order to actually just trick your opponent. If you want a safe game, knight to d7 is nice. Knight to f6 is very dynamic. And knight, the only reason, again, why I didn't recommend knight to f6 was because it's such a trendy variation. And the theory is just continuously running. And I just thought, if you don't have the time to catch up, then it's not necessarily that easy. So that's why I went for this knight to d7, the Karpov variation. So now I'm just going to push my pawn. Why would you never move knights to the edges? 
Well, it's to do with the amount of squares a knight has. So a knight in the center has eight squares available to it. The octo knight at the edge of the board, unless it's doing something, it's only going to have a, how many squares? So if a knight's on A4, it only has four squares. So already that's half the circle. So that's why you want to have your knight on the center of the board. You also want to put your knights on posts. Uh, let me just get out of this pin and just, okay, let's go like this and get ready to push my pawn and queen. So, ah, uh, yeah, it was a little bit hard to find because it's chess com community. So yeah, but you found us, Ikao. You found us and we are here playing the Karakan Arena and having fun. There's lots of there's lots of chess to be had. And if you guys have enough of me chatting about chess, we can also look at some of the games in progress. You beat Nigel Pover in a line who published the book. Just <laughs> you know something. I am homeless on Wi-Fi. That is true. It's it's just one of those things. It's like you have all this information just whirring through your head. And you sometimes it's difficult just to make sense of it all and just to remember exactly what you've recommended. And it's, it's often said that authors find it very difficult to play their own lines because they can't remember. <laughs> okay, so and now I am playing Ratchet's Wadha. So now I'm on the white side. And uh, now, oh, yes, I wanted to play different lines. I don't know why I'm reaching for the e pawn all the time. So, okay, so let's go and let's play bishop d e3. And there the plan is just to go knight to e2, knight to g3, queen to c1. And uh, bishop to e3 was, was a little bit trendy around about 2010. And one of my hero well, actually he became my hero was um boris Pasky was at the gibraltar event and he was just there as a guest of the tournament and i lost to sebastian maze a french grandmaster on the black side of this line and i was just analyzing my game in the foyer because that was the only place that there was any wi-fi and he walked past and then he saw that i was analyzing chess as so he came and sat next to me and we analyzed this position together and it's just one of my most favorite chess memories that is. And we came to the conclusion that as black, you know, you don't have to rush with moves like F6. You can wait it out. So hang on a second. Let me just make sure I can wait it out. Because uh, let's go like this. Make sure I've always got this hang in the air. And... Now I'm going to get f4 and just make sure. I don't, I'm not, not really playing this that well. Um, knight takes bishop, pawn takes bishop. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Yes. What's my favorite three openings when playing bullet rounds? You know something? I'm not one of these people who have a bullet repertoire, a rapid repertoire, <laughs> and a classical. I literally play the same thing. And I, I know people are going to go boring, but it's true. I'm very limited in what I play. I, I need to diversify. So I'll, I'll let you in on a secret. I actually bought uh, a, a chessable course just recently by Surya uh, Ganguly. And there he talks about having a universal system against um, all the sidelines when white doesn't play d4 and e4 white plays c4 so i was like this is interesting to me so i want to know how to handle this so i've decided do i do i have anything against clubs because i want to recommend a very good club no i have nothing against clubs um i really really like it when people are playing chess at the chess club because I never liked it as a kid. I didn't appreciate them. But I, when I got older, it kind of I began to understand how useful they are. Because in Norway, there's some very famous clubs that are all about actually just like studying one particular variation. So I remember they, they came up to me when I was playing in Hushtad in Norway. And they said, Yvanka, 
we've we've all studied your Karakalm book and we've there are half of the club that believes in it the other half don't and they've been having like these theoretical battles and I thought isn't that just fantastic let me just get you sex last open why do I have a, a Czech surname well it's because my great great grandfather was Czech yeah that's uh that's how I have that Czech surname and I have a, a Serbian first name but I, I'm not Serbian I have a beautiful story, though, about how I got a Serbian first name. So my parents just didn't know what to call me. So they, when I was born, they went to, it was a Yugoslavian lady there, and she gave them a whole list of names. And I'm pretty sure she went, this name, it's, it's the name of someone very important. And then my parents were like, you know what, that is brilliant. So I'll give my child that name. But yeah. That's how I came to have a Serbian first name. I just paid G3, G6 in bullet. Yeah, I sometimes, I, I must admit, actually, when it comes to playing moves like the openings, like the London system, I've dabbled in that. But the way that I, I tend to play those in classical games as opposed to quick games, because I feel like you have to be very on it, so to speak, because the advantages are so subtle that if you're not playing in the most correct way, you're, you're a, you know, it's difficult to just nurture that advantage. So that's what I recommend. Go for aggressive ones. Oh yeah. I'm hoping to play. Oh, I'm hoping to play everyone here. I, I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's the Karakan. Kind of sad how some things went in later size. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I agree. He's, just one of the most <laughs> funniest characters you know I, re I remember having a conversation I mean, maybe it's not my story to tell but um Yasa Yasa Sarawan he he was telling me that he, he's a lifelong uh, devotee of the Karakan and you know, Spassky came playing white there's e4 and Yasa c6 and Spassky says in a loud voice Yasa why do you torture me with this and yes, I completely agree with you. This is the best opening there is out there. I have, I, have a, oh, I forgot to click next game. But yeah, I can also have a look at anyone's game. If anyone is playing and wants me to get, look through their game, then just send it in the Twitch chat and make sure you join the, yes, you've got to join the community club first. Oh, I got white again. Okay, so this time I'm not going to play E5. I'm going to be going for, yeah, let's go for the exchange variation. This is the most popular response to the Karakan. And in fact, uh, one thing that did surprise me is that uh, bishops d3 is not the most popular move. It's, of course, the main line. But everyone, 29% of the people at the lower levels are going knight to f3 or knight to c3. Now, I have this thing. I call this bishop on c8 the bully. And it always wants to get out. It wants to be threatening something. So, I mean, I, I've given it such an unfortunate name, but <laughs> I couldn't resist. What can I say? You know, because it wants to be there on F5 looking at this bishop. It wants to be there on G4, you know, eyeing up the queen. Show us a fantasy. I like torturing black like that. Yes. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I'll... But the fantasy is quite hair-raising. I I mean, it is it is a little bit, you know, it takes guts to go F3 and to weaken your king. Yeah, this is the way to handle this. You, you got to be going you get E5 very quickly in the center. So I'm going to throw in a check and then I'm just going to get developed. Uh, Yovi, don't be greedy. Maybe you can be greedy. I always do this when I stream. It's like the greedy person in me goes, let's show everyone that you can take this pawn on d5. But I don't need to play like that. Hmm. No, let's not do it. Let's teach everyone some good chess. It's all about developing, getting your pieces to good squares, castling. This is how I would tell my students. I would say, don't just grab pawns for the sake of it. Focus on development. So let's live by my own rules. I don't know what's happened in my later years. I've gotten as greedy as they get. Okay, so knight to f3. 
I once saw someone playing Queen. Yes, yes, I, I, I played Queen B six myself. I, I think I won both games that I played in the Queen B six lines. One of them, I was dicing on the edge. I was, I mean. Afterwards, my opponent said to me, you should go to the casino and gamble because you were really lucky today. And I was like, I know, I know. And the other one was quite an interesting game against Gavin Wall. I won that one. But again, I felt like uh, the position is sharp. So it's actually not what I recommended in my chessboard course. There, I'm just recommending to actually go for the triangle, keep it just very stable. Because after all, Karakhan players should be quite happy in close positions. So yeah, yeah. would moving your bishop to e2 and the other bishop to d2 be a bad move? Um, hang on, that would be earlier on. So bishop to b5. Yeah, well, I wanted to trade off pieces because I'm going to just go for one plan, which is just to make d5 bad. Now, it, it's not enough. I, I need to be playing for a little bit more than that. But often I find that it causes a lot of people to panic and people never underestimate the ability for someone to go wrong. It's, it's one, of, one of life's weird things. I go wrong all the time. I've, I've commented enough high level games to know that people also go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> at the higher levels you might think they're playing perfect chess and I can tell you yes they are like 85% of the time but then I've seen some real howlers everyone is just just uh just playing their best so do I play e4 as white you know I'm dabbling I I used to play e4 religiously and then around 2007, I got my very first uh, trainer and he said to me, why are you playing E4? You're a D4 player in disguise. You like your closed positions? So head for them. So in the way that you're going to do that is go D4. So I, I spent one week learning D4 with him. And then he said, right, you're not playing E4 anymore. And so my very first game with D4 was at the Hastings. And I only knew one line against the King's Indian and he gets me, don't worry, just wing it. <laughs> so I did. And I found that I could wing it in a really good way. So then I kind of stuck with D4 and I started adding to my repertoire. Yes. Yeah, it is just, it is just, rare. it is just rarer. I give you that. But this is one of the things, if you carry on fighting and you keep your, give your opponent that chance to go wrong, then just never ever underestimate people get bored people are tired people are hung i had one one opponent that i suspect resigned because he was hungry because it was yeah because it was like seven hours in and i think he just had enough i was a pawn up it was double rook ending and he was like you know what i just want to have dinner <laughs> i don't want to be suffering anymore and i'm quite grateful he did because i wasn't actually sure how one goes about winning this uh these rook endings but I, yeah, but I did. Okay, so queen here. Or do I introduce my knight into the game? If I introduce my knight, I have to be prepared to sacrifice. And then, but then, oh, come on, Yvanka. Then you go queen to g3, check. And there is no sacrifice. So a knight on f5 will thrive as the rule goes. So that's why I bring snacks. Yeah, I used to bring snacks all the time, but then they stopped people eating at the board. And yeah, at some point, again, it's in my later years, before I was a full on picnic person, I used to have a snack. I maybe even had a sandwich. You wouldn't put it past me. And now I, now I just have electrolytes and maybe I'll have a cup of tea. And if I'm playing through, okay, so knight takes pawn, bishop takes, bishop takes. What do I tell everyone? Okay, so I need to introduce everyone into the party. Okay, so yeah, that was a good defensive move there. If I go here, rook to e5, bishop takes knight, rook takes knight, and yes. That would be a mistake. So let's just drop it back. 
I did a smash and grab. I won a pawn. Can't ask more than that. Did you ever bring Cam Fish to the game? No. No. <laughs> I hang on a second. I'm missing out on a lot of good stories here. I, this is from Pawn Watch Destroyer. I saw someone resign a game because their spouse was calling them. Yeah, I, I can see that. Sometimes you, you're promised to be home by a certain time and you're not back. And the spouse is like, hello, what are you doing? So what's your opinion and viewpoint of Magnus? Magnus is the goat. Magnus is like the best chess player ever. To, and, you know, he's, he's won everything. He absolutely has. And now I want to go here. Why is he torturing me with his, his exchange? I, I just, okay, let's put my bishop here. And it's pre-moved. My rook coming into d4. Yeah, that's way too Norwegian. Yeah. I open it. Yeah. I think I, think I know someone who got told off for bringing tinned sardines into work. <laughs> I was like, that's such a bad idea. And I was, he was like, I know, but I like it. And I'm like, yeah, it's so inconsiderate. But I once had someone eat a burger during the game. And it, it was really annoying. Oh my God. I forgot that. Like I was got I got carried away by my burger story that I forgot that I've literally made my life difficult. But anyway, it is what it is. I've conceded now the sea line because I wasn't paying attention. But, 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 but I have won a pawn. So let's, let's pay attention and let's just focus and introduce all my pieces into the attack. And let's go like this. And I cover the C2 square. That's all good. Um, yeah, so I was really annoyed going back to my burger story. So my opponent shows up 55 minutes late, which already was annoying me because you, <laughs> you lose the game if you show up one hour late and yeah, the, the rook and pawn ending, am I making life difficult for myself? Uh, yeah, because why am I trading off queens when he's got an unsafe king? Come on, Yovi, follow your example. You're, you're always telling. This is, this is also one of the great things about playing chess and watching chess. When you watch chess, you, you literally can see everything. You're like, oh, yes, this happens, this. This is what, these are the rules you should be following. But when you're playing chess, it's a, it's a different story. So now here, queen takes knight. Now, of course, your king is safe, so you can take with the knight. So that's all good. <laughs> like with football it's easy in front of tv yeah literally and and the norwegians have a lovely word for this they call it slipper hero someone sat there on the sofa <laughs> giving advice and pretending that they can solve the world's problems okay the king hides on h2 nice hiding place and sometimes as a commentator you you because you, you don't feel that panic you don't feel the emotion so you're able to f see a lot of resources and also you have access to the engines or the evaluation bar at least so it's not so easy so okay queen two if i go g3 so my my instinct is telling me his king is unsafe yours is safe he's gonna have problems so keep the queens on the board. What of the burger eater then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back, going back to my story. I'll get there. So he arrives 55 minutes late. Default time is one hour. So that already is annoying. He loses a pawn really quickly. And you know how it is when you win a pawn. You're just like, okay, well, the game will win itself. Bad idea, bad move by me to play so automatically. So what happens next is that he starts fighting. He starts and he starts improving his position. So yes, I'm a pawn up, but it's not so easy anymore for me. So then he grabs a burger and he starts eating this burger in front of me. And I'm just like, ugh, that's so disgusting. 
And I was just so annoyed and I was so triggered because the trend was not in my favor whatsoever. And I just made things worse. And now he's eating a burger in front of me. And I'm like, oh, how could you? Uh, okay. Now, I've, I've speaking of this, I'm also making my life a bit difficult for myself because the porn on B2 is hanging. And I would like to kind of go age five, but I feel like that might not necessarily. Ah, let's just do it. Might not necessarily be the best move, but we'll do it anyhow. Just for fun. Wasn't Queen H6 stronger than eight? Yeah, hang on, let's go back. Queen H6, I went Rookie 8 check. Yes, it might have been the case. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness me. Yeah. Queen H6, elementary. <laughs> and I can't even blame the fact that Queen H6, you know, that Rook to E8 is a check. No, Queen H6 is also a check. So H5, okay, so now I'm going to go here. And now I'm going to go here. And I'm really making a meal out of this one. But let's see if I can. So F6 is the best move. If he goes queen to f6, yes, yes, yes. We go rook to g8. And wow, why win the game in two moves when you can win the game in 25 extra moves? Okay, so let's go back. An ordinary, but yeah, yeah, it was one of these hotel burgers. And, you know, it was all, he was just sat there looking at me, eating it. And I was just like, yes. And the worst thing is I drew, I drew this game as well. He was low rated. I drew. He arrived 55 minutes late. It was one of those things. Okay, so now we go here, knight to d7. I'm getting ready to go knight to f6. Now, remember, okay, knight takes f6. And now the only thing is I've got to be mega careful with where I put my bishop. So here, there's a two-point attack against my pawn on f7. So I am going to stop that. So I'm going to go e6. And then I'm going to destabilize this person on e5, just for fun. It's more of a virtual chair, but still, I am is an I am. Yeah. I am is an I am. I don't know why I'm not developing the setup is battery, which is something I talk about in my course. And now let's castles and let's go for c5. Let's go C5. Now that is going to be difficult for him. Oh, thank you very much. I like that. And I takes it. Is it he can say, I'm, uh, I'm not. As... <laughs> what does not as mean? Oh, man. I need to... I've been dabbling with the idea of streaming again. Oh, sorry. I've been attacked by fly. So... I'm dabbling with the idea of streaming again. I would love to do it. I really enjoy streaming. But my problem is my schedule. My schedule is a little bit packed. Yes. And remember, you can still join the arena. There you can see it's on chess.com forward slash play forward slash arena. And then some numbers, 32772588. Sounds like a telephone number. So now, okay, oh, these guys are pointing towards my H7 pawn. I'm going to say no. No threat just yet. So I'm going to go, oh, hang on. I should have gone bishop b5. Okay, it is what it is. They were last seen playing chess. The chat horde is getting to your V. No, 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 no. I, I do really like streaming. I like interacting with you all. Sometimes I feel like I might be descending into madness, but you guys are all very nice and very forgiving and when I play bad chess I remember a few times last year just when I started I decided you know let's just st okay right hang on a sec oh hang on a second hang on a second hang on a second I was on the verge of going queen to g4 but if I go queen to g4 I can go queen to g4 I can give back some material bishop takes h7 king h8 yeah, I can do that. Because after all, I, I am a piece up. 
But do I need to? Do I need to give up? And the answer is no, Yovi. You can be greedy. You can have it all. One day, my son, this will all be yours. Queen comes to F4. I'm guarding H6. You have, oh, are you, are you guys meant to be mean? No, there's no fun in being mean. <laughs> Unless, yeah, well, that's the thing though. You gotta, yeah, it's nice to have banter. I agree with that. I'm a Brit. Ah, oh, I'm also sending love from Norway. I'm from the UK, which I'm now going to go to South End on Sea and play some chess. I'm looking forward to it. I have zero expectations. It's just there to train. And then after that, I'm looking forward to doing commentary, the women's candidates. That's going to be incredible. Who? So who is your pick for winning the women's candidates? Do you think it's going to be Vaishali? Do you think it's going to be Leighton J? What about Anna Muzichuk? Okay, so this is now knight comes out to f6. And now this bishop on c8 is my bully piece wants to be flexing out there on g4. If it's deprived of the g4 square, then I'm going to put it on f5. So now here is my little idea, knight to a5. And in the course, it's quite nice. If, if your opponent is higher rated than you, you can literally just bully them with the draw. You're like, you know what, let's, let's agree a draw. Oh, hang on a second, it wasn't knight c6. Oh, my theory is bishop to d7. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Now I can drop back. And this, uh, these pieces, they've kind of taken some time to get to b5 and to a4. So I can now waste time with my bishop to d7. And now this is important. You go e6, you solidify your center, and then this next move is cool. How do you cope playing someone a lot higher rated? Do you get psyched out and love it? Um, I like it. I, I, I like it, actually. Overall, I'd rather play a higher rated player than a lower rated one because a lower rated one you feel like you have to win so whereas a high rated player you can just just enjoy the game the only problem with playing high rated players is at some point when you're doing really really well it's very important to control your nerves you, you can't get too over excited and go oh I'm much better and that's because that's when the blunder happens you have to be calm my best moments in chess is when i've been massively calm i don't know what's happened there's been like this like wave of silence that's just descended over me and i have just been thinking about the game i've not been thinking oh i'm going to win nothing of the sort f5 this is oh hang on a second i forgot i need to go a6 first never mind queen to c7 and yeah ah nice to see you too darren nice french law i just played tournament everyone i ended up getting two and a half points out of five that's an awesome score it, there's there's something beautiful about being the lowest rated player in a tournament because no one expects anything from you and even if you lose all your games you still have that mentality hey that i'm going to be I'm going to be learning. Thank you. You see, this is actually my course, except, except I threw an A6, which I forgot. Yeah, exactly. I, I did the same. I, I was better in, oh, hang on a second. Okay, this fine, it's fine. Queen C, Queen C2 is one way to hold on, but then I just castle. Yes, yes, yes. It's all good. Everything is fine. I, I'm good to go. Yeah, it's so easy. So easy when you're playing higher rated players to go for these things. So mistake number one is to lack confidence. And so what happens is that you just spend a lot more time on the clock and this has an impact in the critical moments of the game when you have to objectively handle this position when you're short on time, that's not going to be an easy task against grandmasters. Uh, another thing that 
we have problems with when we're playing high rated players is that we simply just fall foul of our emotions. We get nervous. We think, oh my goodness me, we're going to be winning. We're going to be doing this. And yeah. And another, another key mistake is again, it's psychological is that we don't press hard enough for the win. So I had this issue at the Norwegian team series, uh, championships. Yeah, just now. So my team did really badly. We got relegated. It was really sad, actually. But anyway, that's that's an irrelevant point. Because i would had, for the last four years, a horrendous experience with my Norwegian team, Bergens. I literally lost all my games. So I, before that, I like played all these games for them, and I'd won nearly everything. And then suddenly... I was losing every single game I played and I was like, I don't know what's happening. And I was playing people who were higher rated than me, but still, I still expect to give a better, better fight. And I think my total was like half out of 12, something ridiculous, really, 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 really bad. And anyhow, I decided this next elite series I decided I was going to go on a sugar fast I was like just in case that's messing up my 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 energy levels and I was going to just take it easy and what I found out was that in my last game so I won the first game and I was like yes 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 yes, yes. and then when I lost the second game which was really annoying because I it was completely equal but he, the grandmaster was turning things around in his favor, but it was still equal, still had chances to draw it. And then I just did a massive howler where I forgot my rules, which is, you know, I got the pass pawn as a prisoner, keep it under lock and key. And I forgot that one. Never mind. And I fell foul of a tactic. And then I played in my last round game against a young kid. He's going to be a grandmaster. He's like 14 years old or something like that. And he's so good for sure he's going to be a grandmaster it's just a matter of time and he played really provocatively and because I was so nervous about my my previous score and how badly I'd been playing I, I didn't push hard enough and that's a mistake that lots of people make okay I, I let me catch up with chat so I've been playing for two years rated 1900 think about my first do you have any recommendation for your first rated tournaments? It's so important that you enjoy it. It's such a cliche, but it's so true. It's such a lovely experience that you just got to go in there, play chess, make sure that you find friends or that you, maybe if you can go with friends, that's even better. But if you can't, then uh, just make sure that you are enjoying every single minute of this competition because it's such a beautiful experience. It's going to be a learning opportunity uh, and there's nothing quite like the thrill of the competition. So Rick F7, did you say you would watch on games? Yeah. So I wonder, I, yes, I, I'm going to, yes, I can watch the games that are going. So if anyone has a special request, yeah. And yeah, I'm going to be doing commentary for the candidates for the women's. I don't know whether I was meant to announce that, but I just did. So, <laughs> and if you don't see me, well, there you go. Maybe I wasn't, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, and, and this is also one of the great things about chess ball, actually, that I'm a big believer in chess being fun and big believer of, of uh, joining community and just practicing with that community and having them first up, you know, help you with your chess. And it's easier to study when you have players who are like-minded friends. I, um, the English mentality was for years to do everything by yourself. And that's just a load of nonsense. It's not, it's so hard to study chess by yourself. I mean, even moving the pieces on a physical board becomes an effort when it's like that. Much easier to just study with friends. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that happens. Again, you, you've got to have that beginner mindset as well, which is all about enjoying the game. So does anyone want to, okay, have a look? Okay, so so there's one person, the Oscuridad, who is really racing through. So let's maybe watch their game. 
and see how they're getting along. So, oh, they're getting along in the caro. This looks like a great caro con. Let's see how it, hang on a second. Ah, so E4, C6, B6, B6. Okay, this is, <laughs> okay, I need to call this. This is not the caro con. This is the troll version of the caro. I mean, yeah, D6, allowing a pawn to get that far. And then e, allowing e5 and giving up the light squared bishop. Okay, then white just blundered with bishop to g5. Okay, so uh, that that uh, wasn't. Okay, so let's go back and let's see Levs. Levs was doing very well. He won all his games, or all their games rather. Who's my pick for winning the candidates? Um, In the open section... I don't know. It's a youth against experience. I I really like Fabi. I, I really love to see him win this. But then again, I I really adore the Indian kids like Gukash. He's such a and Pragnananda. I I like Vidit as well. I mean, they all feel like friends to me. So I I, I don't know. I don't know. I would I wouldn't mind seeing how Abasov gets. I I, I would be. I think the, the British part of me is cheering for the underdog here. So here, so I actually, that I didn't really give, I didn't really do, hey, Hikaru, Hikaru was cool, of course, as well. And when it comes to the women, I it would be incredible if Vaishali, Humpy, um, Tang Zhong Yi, I mean, they're all fantastic players. I mean, I, I, the chest is going to win. So here, I mean, this is kind of one of these typical Karakon positions where Black is trying to get all the queenside space, obviously, but they have to take care about their king. This bishop can drop back to c2. It's going to have unfettered access to h7, but it's very, very important that white doesn't just play for one thing. White has to also control the center, also has to get open, get ready for the opening of the c5, because if Black is able to withstand the pressure against the king, then you know, black will have grabbed that space on the queen side. And what black wants is to do a Keith Arkell style play, which is to trade off as many pieces as possible. And then what you do is that you use the minority attack of advancing the queen side pawn in order to create a concrete, concrete target on the queen side. So knight to f3. Um, yeah, nice. It's an interesting position because this knight on d5 is very, very good. Pawn on e6 is a weakness, but there's no kind of coordination whatsoever between the white forces. This uh, bishop on h4 is out there on the limb. White needs to hurry up and centralize the rook. Pardon? What was that? I beat an NM. Well done. Well done. NM, national master. That's that's above a candidate master. So knight to f5, f4 even. So, Yeah. I feel like okay, Black just has to consolidate, develop the pieces, centralize the rooks. White also has to do the same. It's a very intriguing battle. So let's go back. Let's go and join in the arena. Can you look at my game? Oh, hang on a second. Chess. Yes, I will be looking at your game. Can you tell me your handle? And then I'll have a look at your game. Okay, I'm me. I'm white. Mr. Magic. How am I supposed to play an in Indian game? Pawn push variation from black. Uh, uh, what, what is what is a pawn push variation? I don't know. I don't know my names. I thought that Coca Cola sponsored. Yes. <laughs> I wish one day they will sponsor us chess players. But I did see that chess is on TV. That's already a good sign. When, yeah, it's a variation when you're pushing your pawn. Yeah, I figured that much. They push d4 pawn and after I develop a knight. Yeah, I, I need some moves here. So queen d2. So someone's trying to play the Gurganitsa against me. So now I'm going to go h4. I'm going to go hard. Okay, we go hard. I go hard. To the wings. I push forward d4 after I develop the knight. Okay, very good. And uh, go hard. 
take the space. And now every fiber of my being is saying sacrifice a pawn. Like literally everything screaming, ah, oh, he didn't let me sacrifice a pawn. Okay. And then knight two, okay, I have that one. And now I'm going to come here. Yeah. Yeah, this says this has not gone well for, for white knight to d6 is a big threat. Checkmate. Report them. I'm done with rapids. Oh. Yeah. Online cheating is such a horrible thing. So um, there was someone who asked me to look at their game. Can you just in the comments, can you just tell me what your handle is? And then I will have a look at your game. If anyone is playing in the arena and wants me to check out the game, then just, just message in the chat. Okay, so I'm playing Vidya Ganesh. And then never mind, it finished. No, it's okay. But just if you show me, if you just type in your handle, I can have a look. Ash Kapoor. Okay, I will be looking for you then. Next, after this game, I'll have a look at your game and see how you're handling the Karakhan, my favorite opening. Okay, so now the bully wants to come out. That is it. It's out. It's flexing away. So the whole aim of this opening is that we're going to solidify the center. There's going to be no contact whatsoever. So the energy then transfers over to the wings. Now, this is a moment where you just do have to look at whether knight to e5 is going to be a problem, like g4 followed by knight to e5, but it's not a problem here because I've always got queen c7. Okay, and now out. And if this bishop ever drops back to d3, I'll be trading off bishops. This bully wants to be flexing away. So now I want to go here. And then castle kingside. So candidate master requires a feeder rating of 2200 minimum. Ah. No, but hang on, this is the same. Candidate requires. Oh, so national master is a USCF. Ah, I never knew that. You learn something new every day. Thank you for helping me. Mr. Chess, Chess, Mr. Chess as a SP, Chess as P, Mr. Chess as. I'm very bad at reading these long names. NM depends from country. In some country, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist in the UK. It does not exist at all. So here, when it comes to the exchange variation and the structure. One of the things I bang on about it is first up, you, I have these lifelines for every chapter. There's a life, five lifelines. By chapter, I mean every opening, every variation. And in, when it comes to the exchange, the first lifeline says, okay, you, you've got to develop your pieces. Second one is all about neutralizing white's kingside attack before they've even started. And then the fourth lifeline, which is all about what I'm going to be doing. So once I've neutralized the king's side attacks, e.g. I've stopped a knight getting to e5, e5, and my king is completely safe, then I'm going to be going for the minority attack because I want that concrete weakness. And this is, oops, that was a crazy arrow. c4 is my strong square. So first up, I am going to be focusing on um, proving. Yes, it should take, I'm going to go. B5, A5. So I, I want my minority attacks. Okay, let's go B5. I might have rushed this one. When it comes to minority attack, you don't need to rush. You can just connect your rooks and get control of the position. It is, it is, it is basically a Carlsbad structure. It's the most popular response to the Karakhan. And it's a very important structure. Pawn structure. No, it happens in the QGD. It also happens in the London system. You definitely need to know your ideas. And you have to remember what I want is I want control of that strong square and I want to be going for B4. So, 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 so. 
if I go B4 now, if I go A4, E5, I also kind of like this idea of ruining your structure at the cost of a pawn. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I have the bishop pair. I don't care about structure. Okay. And now, that was a good move. Maybe I shouldn't have been so blasé about this. No, knight comes to d7. Okay, so I get rid Whoa, it's knight l c6. I, I saw that, I saw that. Knight takes, pawn takes. Do, 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 do. Bishop takes. Okay, let's just neutralize the king's side. And when I move my queen, I can move my rook. Oh. And why can I not move my queen there? Because he goes here. We go here. Yeah, of course, I want my rook on b8. Okay, please don't fill up the entire... Blah, blah, blah. Oh, 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 someone got a warning. Rook to b8. Yeah, everyone gets a good... Oh, I, oh, I forget. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't. I think titles are very inspirational. I, I mean, I, I, I think that they're a, a good idea overall. I, I'll be honest with you. I had a, a love hate relationship with my woman's grandmaster title. I, I didn't want it. I absolutely did not want it when I was a teenager. I just wanted the international master title. I was like, and I, I got the WGM title accidentally. People, my federation argued for it, for it, and I got it at one of these V-Day meetings. But then, and I actually, when they sent me the bill, because you get billed for your titles, I, I remember saying, I don't want to pay this because I, I didn't want it in the first place. The only the international master title would do for me. But my mum was like, no, it's the woman's grandmaster title. So you, you've, I'll pay it. So she paid for my WGM title. And it's actually been, it was a lovely decision that she took for me because it enabled me to get conditions for things that I was not getting conditions elsewhere. So it's actually given me a lot of opportunities. It sounds better than international master. And I can see it's very aspirational for a lot of people. A lot of people want it. So who am I to say, no, you can't have it. So that's, uh, so for me, it's just a very personal thing. I I've, I've learned that there's no hard and fast rules in life. I used to be quite judgy as a person and now not anymore. What matters to me is that people are happy. That's the end. Can you give us something to... On how to attack as black in the Karakhan Tartakova where white castle longs. Usually they make the bishop queen. Um, I'm really bad with names. The, the Tartakova lines, can you... Is, is that where white goes in the main line? E4, C6, D4, D5, and then knight C3. And then you're looking at... You're talking about those lines where white just castles long. Can you... Knight F6 is... Uh -huh. Or night. Can you check my game? Yeah, okay. I will check your game. Let me just finish this and then I will look at your game. And okay, so yeah, look at uh, this is this is bad chess, by the way. I'm not looking after my king. <laughs> okay, and then games. Can I look at someone else's game? Ah, e takes f6. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Oh, those ones. Yeah, you've got a you've got a castle kingside, and uh, the h5 lines are very interesting, actually. But again, it's very very topical. It's a very very trendy line, and there was a brilliant game quite a few years back. 
played between um, Tatev Abrahamian against Arena Crush. And Arena Crush played this H5 line. And there she just, I really recommend that you look at this game because there Arena played the most perfect Karakhan. She traded off the, the, the bishops. She got a strong square for her, her knight and it was just beautifully done. And for me, that was one of my model games. Now it's a little bit tricky because obviously white has wisened up to that. And so now white has ideas of going C4. So that is, it becomes a race. You have to call, if you want any aggressive tries, you've got a castle king side. You've got to know that D5 is your strong square. Okay, so queen takes pawn, still no king side attack. I'm good. I'm good to go. And I'm going to come in with my rook to C2. What are your thoughts on the alien gambit about Karakhan? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it, it, but it seems to be working. Everyone seems to be going for it. I didn't even know it was a thing until I started watching Levi and Hikaru doing it. Okay, let's give Rook C2. Francis Rook takes Rook. Please check my game. Yeah, I will, I will check your game. Let me just finish my game. I'm not if I'm not sure whether I can open up a tab. I ah uh, yeah. Oh, you got a winning position. Oh, right. and the big hello tapes new. Nice to see you here. Um, yeah. So alien gambit. Yeah, it can't work, can it? It's just nonsense. Rick takes Rick, and now I'm going to go queen to d1 check, and I'm going to pick up material. Have you thought about doing the Reykjavik? Yes, I play the Reykjavik Open. So, okay, so I had some requests about play, about having a look at Ash Kapoor and who was the other one? I've forgotten the exact name. Gigante Gogo, do, 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 do. Blunder Under. Yep, Ash. I'm, I'm looking for you, Ash Kapoor. Um, maybe I can search. Oh, how can I search? How many points do you have? Hmm, this should be a search function here. Um, quite a few people playing. Lots of Karakhan enjoyers. Um, how to follow. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there's a lot of people playing and I, oh, this is annoying. I didn't think this one through, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm in eighth. Okay, okay, so hang on. One person's in eighth place. Okay, so eighth place. If you can tell me your standings, then let me know. Ah, Mr. Chesapeake. Oh, okay, so, oh, but you're actually, you're actually playing online. Like, oh, I shouldn't give you tips. But I will tell you what, I'll have a look at your earlier game. So let's have a look at. I am more of a Karakhan player. Yeah, we've had that joke before. <laughs> Karakhan, more like the Karakhan. Okay, so Chess as P is playing kind of like a Gerganitsa. And then it's all about the F5 squares, light square strategy to its max. And it just has to make sure that the dark squares are kind of guarded. So you want to be putting that knight onto f5 and then getting in a well-timed c5. Uh, h5. But um, I am 70th place. Okay, but since you're playing, uh, maybe I can have a look at the game that passed. So Mr. Chesapeake. Chesapeake. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's have a look at some of his earlier games. Because I feel I have can I can I stream? Can I do live commentary? Will they hear me? Will they stream snipe me? I'm mostly more a Ponziani player with the white. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, Mr. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's a bit conflict it's a bit complicated to to look at a live game so i am not going to go there but yeah these pieces it didn't work out quite well there was an opening on the position so let's let's go back and i, I suspect let's go back to this part because after bishop g4 h3 this is okay bishop queen takes f3 e6 and after h4 h5 now that i suspect is bishop g5 knight e7 and then a castle queen side knight to seven and yeah here is the moment why i don't think you should be taking on g4 then you've got to stand firm and maybe just come up with your queen to a5 that's what i would do and then then take on g4 and then get ready with your knight because after you take then yeah again you you're very that's too slow to go a6 you need to be there playing bishop, bishop to knight sorry knight to f5 so you want to be going bishop h6 making those type of moves, getting that knight to f5, and then going as quickly as possible over to the queen's side. Because if a6 is just too slow, c5 is not quite ready, because here white is just completely overrunning on the king's side. And now here it's just one of those moments where you just have to hold queen c c7, and after bishop takes knight, yeah, this bishop on g7 is a bad piece. And you're going to have to give up material to get out of that one. So let's let's go to another game. And my advice, this is a critical point here, as after this point, when white went g4, hold. Hold on h5. Don't allow white to go h5. So hold that pawn there. So pawn takes pawn. You can always go rook takes h5. It's not like you're going to castle king slide anyway. Just focus on getting maybe your queen out to a5, maybe your queen to c7 if you want to keep it closer. Maybe even moves like bishop, maybe not bishop to a6 just yet. But I, I think I would go queen c7 and just allow bishop takes knight, king takes knight, and then just move my rook over to the king side as quickly as possible and then just castle by hand. So let's go back and let's have a look at another one 70 he's ranked 70 around that op chaser no it wasn't op chaser um i've lost them i'm sorry but i've lost you and da, 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 da. ratchet wonder da, da, da. No, I, I lost. I lost them. Maybe playing games being viewed, and yeah, I think this game is finished there. Yeah, it is. Looking at crush game. Yeah, it is a great game, by the way. It is a fantastic game. It was my model game. as there my Karakhan database? So okay, I can't find your game. Sorry, Ash Kapoor. I I I, I am looking around seventy. If you can tell me your ranking, thereabouts, then. Yeah, oh, there, there you go. There you go. So okay, so let's let's just handle the opening. So d4, d5. So I can't be accused of helping anyone. So knight c3, pawn takes pawn. Oh, we got the black Madima Gambit. This one has a massive fan club. I mean, they're so passionate about it. Yeah, here I recommend actually go pawn takes pawn. Just grab, grab that pawn, knight takes pawn, and then bishop comes out to g4. And Make sure that you've got your F7 pawn covered at all times, and then you just continue with development. Knight to F6, I don't like. Now here, you've got to play really aggressively. You've got to play moves like E5, because otherwise, look, white's got the center, and the center is very, very important, and they have this open F line. So knight to D7, yeah, you're going to get kicked around. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay, no evaluation bar. Yeah. So I was going to stick to just the opening. So so that way that I could give you just advice on the opening and then I would not comment it on the live, live games because that way I don't want to be helping anyone or <laughs> depressing anyone. But yeah, so what's really important in this type of position, so this is a key point. So if you ever get this, then you've got to go into some kind of fantasy. You've got to, whoops, whoops. I don't think I can analyze. You've got to be making moves like e5 yourself. You've got to be challenging the center. And if white ever goes pawn takes pawn, 
you can go queen takes queen and you've got pressure against this e pawn by going knight to g4. So that's mega important. But in my course, I recommend get greedy. Grab that pawn on f3. If knight takes pawn, you can just simply develop this bishop out to g4 and then just go for a pawn structure, which I call the pillars of strength, pawns on e6 and c6. So, yeah, I am playing in the arena. I am playing in the arena, but I'm also kind of doing commentary. If you want me to look at your game, just the opening, I'm not going to be looking at your live games. And here we go, e4, c6. I'm the white pieces again. And now someone said they wanted me to play the fantasy. <laughs> Fanciful fantasy variation. It's very essential. Yeah, they go, they've gone for my system. And now here, this is the best move, knight c3. And I recommend pin and win. Put the bishop on b4. Okay. okay. Now, my, this my, in my book, in my book, in my Karakhan course, I'm going to go for this pawn structure, uh, this uh, setup. Bishop comes out to b4, and this knight belongs on e7 so that we don't get kicked around. But this way, we have this one of these French defenses. And being a Karakhan player, I wanted to avoid the French defense. So that's why I say none of this for you. But then again, I'm not a... I've been a long time since I played this particular opening, so we'll see how it goes. Every everybody loves my. They should bring it back. It was from uh, the the old Chess Twenty Four website. I think that they should uh, definitely bring it back. And they used to do mugs as well. And I didn't get the mug. I was like, let's just get the hoodie. And after all, that is like my calling card to play the Karakhan. I play it. Whatever happens, is that you? Uh, Okay, thank you. Does the commentator's curse apply to arenas as well? Yes, it does. It does. Oh, hang on a second. It's my move. I was not paying attention. So yeah, it does. Because you're... I, do you know, this is why I, I'm astonished by how well Hikaru does. Because his chest just levels up when he's talking to everyone. Whereas for me, it's just like blunder central. Uh, because I'm like too busy looking at the comments, talking, trying to play chess. And I, I feel a bit rude if I have to go, look, can I just focus on the game? I, I, I once played a coffee house chess championship, which was where people were allowed to talk. And I thought I would really like this, but I didn't. I wanted to be silenced. And it's so funny because that's something that I've always criticized chess for. I was like, you know, why do we play tournaments in silence? It's so not right. It should be played with conversation, with fun. And yet when I had the chance to play this coffeehouse chess and my opponent was talking to me, I was like, please don't talk. <laughs> I want that to be silence. <laughs> any plans yes so when it comes to over the board tournaments i do have some plans so plan number one is i'm going to be playing in south end i'm going to play in the rapid tournament and i haven't played rapid chess in a long time i'm not a rapid chess player i used to play a lot of blitz when i was younger not anymore and so i will be doing that and then I'm going to play the European Women's Championship in Rhodus. And that's going to be at the end of the month. So we'll see how that one goes. I've decided to make a return to the chessboard. I, I want to, I have some personal goals that I'd like to complete. And if I manage, I'll be very, very happy. I, uh, it's, why, why did I put my pawn? forward push forward g4 f5 okay now i need to need to start occupying lines yeah yes yes one should have been doing that instead of okay but i still got my rook to c5 oh yeah and the olympiad uh i hope so it would be nice to play the olympiad it's in hungary it's in budapest i i think it's going to be an awesome experience to play the olympiad I I love playing for my country. You you feel such pride and you also feel a lot of stress as well. There's nothing worse than losing for England 
because you know you feel like you let your country down you f- and the team down but it's it's quite it's not quite right though because i i'm always in, inspired by other countries because they play as a team and when that happens if someone loses no hell, let me not pre-move that move so um if you lose it's up to the rest of the team to make it up and if they can, excellent. If they can't, okay, that happens. And I think you just got to cut yourself some slack in those type of situations, which is not easy for someone like me to do. But again, this again, there's something very magical about playing for your country. It's something I always, always wanted to do. And I took a gap year actually from university in order to play in my very first Olympiad. Okay. Check, check. Let's get that king into a box. And now let's move this here. And now I want to go, yes, h4. This everything's protected. I have an idea. I want to go bishop back to d2. Yeah, maybe I, I'm not playing this the best way because I'm, I'm, yeah, I started thinking this. I was like, hang on a second. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. You can go rook c7. I've had that for a while. Why didn't I play it? I don't know. I'm missing those bounce blitz. Oh, <laughs> they were fun. I, 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 I do want to play them, play more blitz stream i think it's going to be so good for my chest as well i it was recommended by a, a grandmaster he said you know actually not just a grandmaster all grandmasters i talk to when i say what about chess improvement they also play title tuesdays oh i'm playing osh hello osh but i know he watches the stream so i gotta be careful i saw a, a video the other day which is all about streams sniping swiping i don't know no, I don't. Oh, yeah, okay. So then we go pawn takes pawn, go knight to d7. And if this queen comes to e2, that is when the big, the big guy has come into the room and is threatening knight to d6. So that's my moment that this knight on d7 is going to go to f6. So yeah, I know. Stream sniping. Yes. Yes. I, I wasn't sure. I, I, I wasn't sure whether it's stream sniping or swiping. It's been a long time. Knight to f6. And knight to g5 will take it into the main, main lines. You played the alien gambit. Oh, so bad. So bad. So disrespectful. <laughs> Just joking. I, I, yeah, it does, it does remind me a little bit of the way that my father used to recommend me play chess. So he believed that after the petrol defense, which is like e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, you took the pawn on e5 and then you grabbed on f7. He was like, that is virtually winning. And I was never the kind that liked to give up my pieces. So I kind of tried to argue with him. He's like, no, 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 no. It's absolutely fine. You'll like it. And I was like, mm, not sure, not so sure. Okay, so now this queen is loose and he's has a lot of squares left behind. And so I have this saying that I borrowed of someone which is when you push pawns you leave behind weak squares i borrowed a lot of expressions from people uncle theory if yeah could be uncle theory but uh yeah so okay queen c7 i want to break with e5 i want to castle queen side yes it is it is e5 is a yeah it's a great move okay let's just castle do I go knight to d5? Do I go e5? Ah. Oh. Let's just castle queen side. Let's castle queen side and let's just get on with development. And then if I go pawn takes, yeah, let's go e5 now. Just look at my last game rank. I won in 50 moves. Okay, tapes new. Tell me what's 
what ranking you are, that's the easiest way for me to find you because there's a lot of people playing in this arena. And just look at my last game, okay? And I succeeded. E5, okay, E5. So E5 is one of those moves that you don't often play in the Karakhan. And the only time you really want to be going for E5 when it's a killer blow. So I'm here, I'm using on tactics because if pawn takes pawn, well, I'm just going root takes queen. And if he goes bishop takes pawn, I'm going to go queen takes bishop. And there, okay, so that was a good move. So now I need to maintain this pressure. So either I want to move my queen or I want to be going bishop to d6. Now, in an ideal world, I like to stop you from casting queenside. But, but no, let's just focus on development. That's the rules of the games. I am 91 or maybe, no, no, no. Just tell me your ranking and then I will find you. It's the easiest. Way. Oh, my God. Oh, oh God. No, it's it's fine. It's fine. Goodness me. Unsafe. 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 Okay. That's it's fine. It's fine now. You got away with it. You got away with it. Okay, so. Yeah, so let's let's take that. Yeah, let's take that. Yeah. This E5 business didn't work out as well as I thought it would go. Because now these pawns, they might be weak in the middle game, but they're certainly very good in an end game. So let's not trade off queens. Mm. Okay, I've got to work my magic in the center. I'll, uh -huh. So queen check, yes, 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 king to b8. I spotted that at the last minute when the king was not castled that he could go queen to f5 check and then I'd have to go knight to d7. It was okay. It's all good. Everything's fine. Okay, so I've got to work my magic in the center of the board. That has to be done. Oh, rook takes. Ah, that's a good move. That's a good move. Uh, Okay, knight to d5. Whose king is safer? Mm. Mm. My king's not especially safe. Okay, but I cannot get into an endgame. If I get to an endgame, I'm going to have some issues. Space. Yeah. I'm. Yes, I am very excited. I am mega excited about the candidates i think it's going to be a, a lot of fun it's in toronto so it's going to be very late for us in europe and i think i i genuinely don't know who i'd have as my favorite either could be anyone really and I'll, I'll be i won't be doing commentary for the uh open i'll be doing commentary for the um the women's candidates. So that one's going to be, again, a lot of fun because I just generally don't know who is the one that is the favorite. Leiting J, Tan Zhong Yi, Veshali. Veshali was so impressive at the Isle of Man, the Grand Swiss. Oh, oh, that was unfortunate. You got to look at what I'm doing. So this is, this is a, a very handy way to actually improve your your chess is just simply to oh is simply to look at what your opponent is doing and is it's such such actually something that a lot of people forget about including myself you forget that your opponent has plans and you've got to be looking at what they want to be doing and it is really a, an interesting scenario because I remember reading a book and in fact I was so impressed with this book it won the ECF book of the year and it's uh, Think Like a Super Grandmaster by Mickey Adams and there he talks about finding a move and then thinking for all of 
the reasons why they shouldn't be playing that move. And I found that quite a unique, quite a novel way of thinking. I'd never, ever thought of chess like that. I look at why I want to make a move and then I try to figure out like why it's really good. I never, ever go the other way, the negative way, go, hang on a second, why will this not work? So, yeah. So I'm just looking at this game from uh, Mr. Chesapeake and yeah, it's looking like black is a piece down. <laughs> I just counted the pieces. <laughs> I was like, black is doing well. No, black is a piece down. Yes. Yeah, I I, I agree very Charlie. I, I can't, she, her, her play was so exciting. I, when I was following her in the Qatar Masters, her quest to become a grandmaster and how she did it. It was just brilliant. Oh my God, I forgot to look at your game tapes. I'm so sorry. I'll look at it in the next one. Or maybe I can. Yeah, look. Yeah, exactly. When you find a great move, look for a better one. But in, in fact, you've got to be doing this. When you find a great move, you got to look at why your move doesn't potentially work. And that puts you in a mindset which is completely different. You're constantly thinking about what your opponent wants to do and whether it's a good plan. And that way you don't miss threats. You don't miss potential ideas that they had. And it's definitely something that you need to train yourself on. So one thing that I was doing last year, I've is I was practicing on a system because I was trying to get into the systemic way of thinking. And the way that I was approaching my chess training was not to focus on results. So I do a lot of tactics and the focus was always on get, not getting the best score, but instead just looking through all the alternatives. And if I managed to go through like 50 tactics or so, looking at all the candidate moves, then I was going to be very happy with myself. So now I'm going to look at Tape's news game because he asked to see, let me scroll down. He was around about 91. Aha. And here he is. And don't, I think I just missed his game. But we can take a look at the opening and then we'll leave out that. So this is the King's Indian defense. But well, white has played pawn takes pawn. So basically that means there's no conflict in the center. You just want to be putting your knights on c6, on f6, get the bully bishop out to g4 or to f5, your choice. And then getting that stable, light squared, pawn center, pawns on f7, e6, d5. And then you get your dark squared bishop. Let's see whether, ah, he, he got greedy. He took the center. That's okay. And then he pushed back. Yeah, one of the things I like to do is because I like to keep my flexibility. So I would be looking at moves like knight c6 and just maintaining that center for as long as possible, not committing to anything. So d4 is okay. f5, well, knight to g5 is really, really pushing it. h6, I would also do something like that. And yeah, I have a really cool line in my Karpov variation where the knight's on c6, where you can just go g5. And then you ask the question to these two knights, where are you going to go? And in the end, this knight on h3 probably has to go back to g1. And it's done a whole dance across the board in order to get to g1, which is quite fun. So yeah, yeah, he's going hard tapes new, but he's leaving behind weak squares. This square on e4 is something that white can use. So you've got to be very careful. And yeah, pawn takes pawn. Yeah, again... The square on e4 is vulnerability. Now the light squares are also vulnerable. So yeah, Tapes Nuna has to really do something very active now in order to get compensation. So just go knight to f6, castle kingside, knight takes d4, queen e7. Yeah, and, and this is how when you push too hard, you leave behind weak squares. And now white has everything in material and also bishop pair as well as the light squares. And continue looking. Yeah, you've got to be practical. I agree with that, boyfriend, fiendish. You've got to be practical. And again, this comes down to confidence. So you you definitely... So going back to the opening, D3 is is a reasonable move. D5, E takes D5, C takes D5. Remember, you just want to be developing your knights. It's absolutely fine to take the center if if like tapes and you did, but
but here I'd recommend that after knight to f3 you maintain it so you just go knight c6 try to hold on to this pawn on e5 you know because if white has to make moves like queen to e2 well then this queen is standing in front of his own bishop and it just looks a little bit awkward your favorite opening with black against e4 well of course hello what am I wearing I am wearing the Karakhan. It's like my trademark. I did flirt with other openings. There was a time in my life where I decided the Karakhan was too predictable. And I decided I was going to go for the Archangel E5. And I lost. I lost one game like a baby. I did not have a chance whatsoever. And after that, I decided mm -mm, it's not for me. It absolutely is not for me to lose like this. Okay, so knight to f6. I'm not going to go e5. Is that, that's not the theory. I'm going to go a3. Oops, actually. Okay, so now, now I'm going to go bishop to d e3. And I'm going to maintain the tension. You, play, ah, you played a few games with me. Oh, okay, thank you. And now... Oh, I'm, I'm happy that I did this. Because it's... Reminds me of how much fun it is to do banter blitz and to also just stream. It's been a long time since I've streamed and I missed it. I missed you guys very, very much. Yeah. Ah, hello, female nurse. Yes. Yeah, I, I kept this one quiet. So I'm surprised a lot of old, very old, familiar names. <laughs> well, Coca-Cola might not be coming after. I didn't design it. It wasn't me. It was it was from the old Chess24 website. Maybe they can bring it back because it's rather cool. Um, castles is might not. Yeah, let me pre-move. No, let me pre-move. C takes D5. Will I stream the late one? No, I won't be streaming the late one. I um, I'm getting ready to go to England. And play in South End. I'm looking forward to going back home. This is that's the thing, you know. England's always my home. I'm looking forward to playing South End. Last time I played in South End, I had a really good tournament, and I never got to go on. I think it's is it the world's longest pier? I don't know, but it's a very very long pier. I never got to go on it. So hopefully this time I am going to be going on this pier, and playing some good chess as well. I've decided I'm not caring about the result. The result doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is more about having fun. That's going to be, yeah, just like this game where I'm literally give up my bishop pair. There will be burnt blitz going on a short walk on a long bit. Oh, no. Pizza race. Is this, oh, <laughs> oh, no. Was it? Yes. It was like a long walk on a short cliff. That was the expression. I actually didn't know you were streaming. I was, oh. oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is to celebrate the launch of my chasuble course, starting out the Karakhan. That's why I'm streaming in this opening roulette. But I think it's such a great idea that I want to go for more of this. So I know I won't be streaming the late one. Unfortunately, I have to get ready to go to England. So this will be me. And okay, so now I want this pawn. I got my sights on it. I want the knight on f5. I want it all. Yeah. Oh, so many familiar names all saying to me that they miss me. Oh, that's so nice. I, I, I feel very... Very loved. Who will stream late one? I, I I don't know that. But in April, there's going to be more opening roulettes. And a little birdie told me that it's going to be the London system. Yes. I, I, will anyone be there at South End? Will I be seeing anyone? Or is it just me? Uh, hang on, let me take, let me take control of the open line. The offer is going for a good nine days. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, it's um 
I haven't even checked the time control. And will you make Magnus pop up in one of these events? Oh, that would be amazing. I I, I will be streaming when I when I have time in my schedule. I will be streaming, and uh, you can find me there on uh, your Vihauska. So it's just a question of managing to get the timings right. Because the way that my schedule works is that often I'll have periods where I'm not doing that much and then suddenly everything will go crazy and I'll have no time for anything. So I just have to figure out how that works out and then I will try to stream a bit more often because I do enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, I will remember. I will remember. How can I forget? I played you at chess. How can I totally forget? I cannot do that. There's a... But one of these days, though, I was actually thinking, do you think it would be useful to go for one of these memory-improving courses? I was thinking of doing that. I was thinking, right... Let's come up with a system of how to get better at memorizing lines, maybe. And I saw this, there was techniques about creating houses. Oh, I'm going to double up. Double up on the E line. The rip will come to E1 and then pressure on the E line. <laughs> I know, I know. That's, that's why I started talking about memory because I'm like, I promised, and I don't like breaking a promise. But then again, I am aware that at times my memory can fail me. I used to be so good. And this, this, is, this is the most annoying thing. I used to never forget a name, never forget a face. And now sometimes I have to work really hard, actually. I have to continuously like ask them questions. But I'm getting better. Is it, I keep getting beaten at five-minute bullet. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes is is a long time control. It's important to remember five minutes, you've got a lot of time. So just pace yourself. Just play the opening pretty quickly. If there's any complications, use the energy on that. And then this is really important. When you don't have so much time, it's very important just to keep a cool head. That's easier said than done, I know. And if you've got 10 minutes, it's very important, again, to pace yourself. Don't don't just look, make superficial moves. I know I'm playing very, very quickly, but that's because I'm quite excited to stream. How do you try to learn from each game? Do you, Yes, I do review my games. I have game review, and this is especially true of my openings. If I feel like I've had a dodgy opening or I'm not been, I felt a bit uncomfortable, then I make sure that I go onto game review and it tells me off and I'm, I make sure that I remember what they say. So. I did this a lot when people were making alien type gambits against me. They were sacrificing on F7 and I was like, hmm, this is not so easy to handle. So how does the computer play it? And so I went to game review and game review said, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. You move your queen to A5 and give a check and then you swing the queen to H5. I'm like, ah, okay, okay. That's how you do it. So knight takes, rook takes. Rook takes, rook takes. If I go here, knight takes, rook takes. Okay, I should go here. So I always use game review. So in conclusion, and if I feel mega, mega uncomfortable, what I do is I'm a big fan of playing on your phone because I don't have too many physical friends. So what I will do is I will just play on my phone quite a bit and I will make the phone play the color that I was playing with. Why did, I, why did I swap off? There was no need for such things in life. Ah, your favorite opening. The poll ended. I didn't vote. Disgraceful, Yovi. You need to vote for these things. Um, okay. Let's put pressure. Let's put pressure against this D5 pawn. Let's not just make trades. Oh, hang on a second. I could have I could have just traded off and gone knight to e6, e3. Anyway, I thought, oh, the carry one. Ah, oh, excellent. 
Mm, no, I'm in good, good mood. You cheered me up. Can't believe I was the only one who voted for the French. Yes, you're in a Karakhan arena. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of a rivalry going on between the Karakhan. Dude. Sorry, wait one second. I was I was not paying attention and I feel like I blundered a piece. I did blunder a piece. Oh my God. That's not good. That's not good. How are you going to... Oh, Yvanka... It's not good. Don't do those things. They're not good for anyone. Knight takes. Okay, so okay. We, now let's sell this piece. Expense. If I go queen takes pawn, it just goes queen takes, rook takes, and then knight takes pawn. Mm. I have some good pieces, so let's go into the end game. Oh, that's disgraceful. Anyway, rook to d2, d7. Maybe I win this. Um, oh, the second arena will be later on. I don't know. Has this arena finished? Am I still playing chess? I hate chess and karate. Karate is really cool. I love karate. I love watching it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I also, I love watching gymnastics, to be honest with you. I think gymnastics is, is such a wonderful sport. And let's go. Yeah. No, 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 Yvanka. You've got to make your po. You've got to do what your dad told me. My, my dad used to say to me, Yvanka, when you're losing, you got to make your opponent's life difficult for them. Don't just give up without a fight. And that means basically that I've got to just stop handing them small advantages. So there you go. I put my rook on a8. So now I'm attacking the space of the pawn chain. And now I'm going to go g3, try to control. Okay, you want to come to the rook to d2? I'm going to say no. You're not going to go. Oh, I should have put my rook. What am I doing? Be difficult. Be difficult. Last well, night comes in here. He's he's good. Uh, okay, no. Be difficult. Be difficult. He doesn't have so much time. One takes pawn. Okay, which way do I take with? I'm going to take with this pawn. You still got. Uh, by the way, which is the next opening? As the well, the late night will be the Karakhan as well. So it's Karakhan all round to celebrate my new course. I can't believe, I can't believe I have a course in the Karakhan. It was always my dream to have a chessable course, but I never thought I would do one because I, I, I thought there's so many good videos on the Karakhan. But here I am and I've done a course. That's just, sorry, I'm just like timing out. Uh, so what's my rating? I don't know my rating, I'll be honest with you. I don't know it because I don't like how how uh, I lost lots of rating. And I didn't like that. So, so therefore I haven't paid attention to it. But I think I went up on my, I think I'm going to go up because I had a good performance at the Norwegian Elite Syrian. I, I beat a 24 something. I, I lost to a 2600, which was, which is a really, it was a nice fight. Let's put it that way. And okay, I need to look after my pieces. Okay. So we know if I manage to swap off, If I manage to swap off this, okay, da, 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 da. so if I swap off this knight and bishop and I trade off all the pawns, it is going to be a draw. Now that is a massive mountain to climb, but you know, weirder things have happened. Okay, so one pawn 
is coming off. And now I have one issue. If he goes there, it's checkmate. So how to do this? Okay, that. Okay, so there. My hair set to trap. Set to trap. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was like the most dirtiest checkmate ever. But I saw it. I saw it. But uh, if the night came to, oh, the arena is over. Oh, that that was it. Let's go. Oh, that was that was a dirty trick. Oh, I'm so sorry, Creative Fox. You deserve to win that one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Does swindle feel good, don't they? Oh, but okay. So someone asked me to take a quick look at a game. Please analyze game 61. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure I can get that game 61, unfortunately, because the arena is now finished. But that was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so much for joining in listening to me ramble on about the Karakhan, watching my games sharing your thoughts and of course just having so much fun with me along the way it's been a pleasure to be part of the Karakhan opening roulette i hope you guys learned a little bit of something and i again apologize to creative fox for that very naughty swindle there at the end but thank you everyone once again for watching and Remember, just keep enjoying chess every move of the way. Good night. Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday. And finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on Chess.com. Hi, I'm International Master Ivan Gahowska and welcome to my first course for Chasuble, starting out the Karakhan. Light square strategy is what I like to call it. You put your pawns on light squares, you develop your pieces, and then when the time is right, you break out in the center. What I need you to do is get in the focus of quick development. Knight takes g7, check is possible, king moves to f8, attacking the knight. And now after knight to h5, what we want to be doing is first asking that question to the knight. Because white can immediately go wrong with knight to e2, we simply go knight to b4. And this bishop and the knight have orchestrated a sneak attack against c2. And now black is totally winning. There are lifelines to help you remember the piece configurations. There are guidelines. There are cautionary tales. And of course, there are my trademark phrases, all to help you get a good Karakhan. Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday. Battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday. And finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on Chess.com.
Hi, I'm International Master Ivan Gahowska and welcome to my first course for Chasuble, starting out the Karakan. Light square strategy is what I like to call it. You put your pawns on light squares, you develop your pieces, and then when the time is right, you break out in the center. What I need you to do is get in the focus of quick development. Knight takes to g7, check is possible, king moves to f8, attack in the knight. And now after knight to h5, what we want to be doing is first asking that question to the knight. Because white can immediately go wrong with knight to e2, we simply go knight to b4. And this bishop and the knight have orchestrated a sneak attack against c2. And now black is totally winning. There are lifelines to help you remember the piece configurations. There are guidelines. There are cautionary tales. And of course, there are my trademark phrases, all to help you get a good Karakhan. Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday. Battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday. And finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on Chess.com. Hi, I'm International Master Ivan Gahowska and welcome to my first course for Chasuble, starting out the Karakhan. Light square strategy is what I like to call it. You put your pawns on light squares, you develop your pieces, and then when the time is right, you break out in the center. What I need you to do is get in the focus of quick development. Knight takes to g7, check is possible, king moves to f8, attack in the knight. And now after knight to h5, what we want to be doing is first asking that question to the knight. Because white can immediately go wrong with knight to e2, we simply go knight to b4. And this bishop and the knight have orchestrated a sneak attack against c2. And now black is totally winning. There are lifelines to help you remember the piece configurations. There are guidelines. There are cautionary tales. And of course, there are my trademark phrases, all to help you get a good Karakhan. Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month.